Okay, I have a little tapping job set up here. 440 holes. They're blind holes. I do through the edge. I go down to that hole, but not, not to the other side of the hole. It's probably for a set screw. Pull that in there. Uh, I know you can buy, this is, this is what I call my uh, slip clutch tapping head. If that tap should become dull or bottom out, uh, it's free to spin freely and uh, so it avoids tap breakage. Like I say, I'm aware you can buy these, but I made this. And it's only good for about up to 1032. That's about as big as the, the slip clutch can handle. But I don't break very really many taps bigger than 1032. Okay. So we'll, and there's a collar here to where I can adjust the amount of drag. Of course, I'm tapping A2 here, so we want to use plenty of tapping on And I have to run this down, watch the depth setting, and reverse. This old drill press is running on a variable frequency drive. That makes the overall electrically variable speed. And there's a terminal there. I got a foot switch down on the floor for uh, reversing the spindle direction. Now I was that slip clutch was slipping on just about every hole there a minute ago. Either I didn't drill completely through, or I finally got the clutch set. With the right amount of tension. Oops, I shut it off. I can shut the drill press off with that another switch with a foot switch. And those ones I didn't get to go through all the way, I'll have to go through. I'll run that 440 tap with my cordless drill and then I'll watch and then I'll I'll watch to make sure the tap comes is visible out that hole and I know I'm deep in it. And I have a CNC milling machine. I've got two of them. But I decided to do this job on my manual machines. My manual mills actually got more cable travel than my my old CNC bridge port. And CNC is a wonderful tool, but it's just not the answer all the time. Okay, I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna stop the video here.